So today on Two Cents Worth, we're going to look uh, at a party that dominated the Conservative electorate in New Brunswick for a few years in the late 80s and early 90s. Now, this will be a two-part podcast because talking about the Confederations of Regions Party of New Brunswick, uh, because I've covered them so long and I've been anti-core for so long, might take a little bit of extra. So bear with me on the first part. There's a little bit of history I have to go into before we get part two, the meat and potatoes of the rise and fall of this party that lasted 13 years uh, in New Brunswick. Now, the Confeder- New Brunswick Confederation's uh, Regents Party uh, was a political party in New Brunswick, and it was the only uh, provincial branch of the National uh, Confederation of Regents Party to win any seats. Uh, it held official status in the Legislative Assembly in uh, New Brunswick between 1991 and 1995, before losing all its seats in the 1995 election. Now, um, there's a little bit of background we have to go into. Uh, there was a lot of factors going on at play. The provincial PCs under Richard Hatfield in 1984-1985, uh, many of them were disgruntled with the leadership of uh, Hatfield. Some feel he had sold out New Brunswick uh, by helping and trying the Constitution and putting bilingualism into the Constitution, making New Brunswick a bilingual province, where the ma- a good majority of the PCs didn't want that. There was uh, groups like New Brunswick uh, uh, Association of English-Speaking Canadians that were uh, holding meetings and getting organized to try to convince the PCs to take a more conservative aspect uh, towards uh, leadership. That wasn't happening. Um, By the the, the mid uh, to late 1980s, support for the PCs was going way down. Uh, Hatfield was waiting to call election until the last moment. And by the time um, numerous uh, corruption scandals occurred, the whole PC party collapsed in 1987 when the Liberals under Frank McKenna won the election with uh, uh, 58 seats and nothing. Now, um, at the time, which actually is still around day here, many rural and some urban English-speaking New Brunswickers uh, do not like the government's position, either past or present, about uh, the use of official uh, bilingualism in the public services. Now, uh, CORE, as their main goal, promised to repeal the 1969 Official Languages Act, with, uh, which made the French language in New Brunswick equal for official purposes with English on a provincial-wide basis. Now, CORE proposed providing government services in French only in areas with a large Francophone population. And... Uh, According to uh, published reports and my own coverage of the core party, the French-speaking Acadian population believed this to be an anti-Francophone policy, so the core had no support in areas with large Francophone populations and in regions of uh, pretty well bilingualism, including Bathurst, Campbellton area. Now, uh, in the 1988 federal election, the core party uh, got considerable, uh, uh, considerable success in New Brunswick in the federal vote, he nominated candidates in seven of the ten ridings, and he won 4.3% of the vote. Now, that was a pretty good total for a, a federal uh, uh, party. 4.3% um, in New Brunswick is comparable to half the, uh, pretty well, the support of the current NDPs on the provincial and federal level. But that was just a test run. By 1989, the court's provincial wing was founded, and membership businessman Archie Pafford who I've known and met, and I find him to be a, a fine gentleman, uh, was elected leader, and former Hatfield cabinet minister Ed Allen becomes the party's most uh, notable candidate. Now, before the 1991 election occurred, uh, of course, you're dealing with a legislature that's completely controlled by the Liberals. We're seeing more and more problems on the federal level between uh, then PC Prime Minister Brian Mulroney and uh, different factions of the French across Canada. Quebec wanted uh, more rights. You still had a separatist movement in Quebec that was quite strong despite the uh, the reduction of the support of the uh, Parti Québécois under René Lévesque. But this was stirring a lot of anti-French uh, movement in New Brunswick. And um, the core party responded to this. Now, the party's greatest success came in the 1981 provincial election in New Brunswick. Now, uh, going to the election, like I said, the Liberals held all 58 seats. But um, 
many conservatives, uh, including in the Carleton County region, Franklin, uh, throughout the province, which is kind of the actually the key of the PN, current PA and NB support, People's Alliance in New Brunswick, which is core light to many people. Um, it amounted to uh, a number of, uh, uh, what do you call it, major candidates running. And in that uh, blue corridor, as I call it, the uh, core was able to capitalize on the situation. And to get this, he got 21% of the votes, which was quite impressive. 87,000 votes and eight seats despite running in only 48 of the 58 ridings. Now, um, at the time that election, the placed second in 18 seats, third place in 17. So basically, at the time, there were number uh, three party on the ballot. And um, it was uh, it's, it was pretty weird. Now, the, the party ran full slates in Northumberland, Westmoreland, and Victoria counties, uh, which had, you know, mixed English and Acadian population. And a full slate in the Acadian but bilingual rest of Gooch County. The only nominated one candidate in Ken County, two in Gloucester, and uh, there was no uh, candidates in the French majority, Madawaska County. The PCs who were eliminated in the last election ran a full slate of candidates, but uh, unfortunately only won a few seats and only got 20.7% 20 of the vote. Now you got to understand this is, if you look at a combination of the PC and core support, that's almost 42%. That might have won them if they were a merge party um, at the election, but according to the core people I spoke to and the core supporters, they want nothing to do with the PC party because the PC party was in support of official bilingualism. And uh, they, they looked at uh, the core party as uh, standing up for the little man, standing up for the English speaking New Brunswickers that felt uh, they had no voice, which is the democratic right. But it became very muddy and I'll tell you why. By, uh, by the time this election occurred, um, the, uh, it, uh, it had a weird effect. Their success pro propelled pro-bilingual politicians to enshrine Section 1601 in the Charter rights to threaten the Brunswick's uh, bilingualism. So their election had the opposite effect because the feds under Brian Mulroney, which was the PC Prime Minister, worked, with, uh, worked to threaten the Brunswick as a bilingual province and made it almost a fait accompli that even if the core won election uh, to the provincial uh, legislature as the, the main party, they couldn't change the laws. Now, uh, according to core leader Archie Paffer at the time, um, uh, uh, they had to make changes. The because um, Paffer was election elected, they had to call the convention in Campbellton, and that's where the uh, the problems really started for the core party. So, in our second podcast, we're going to talk about the the strange convention in Campbellton '92 that involved the election of a new core leader, which I covered in which probably remains one of the most bizarre events in my political coverage career where basically everything from uh, renegade uh, media were showing up uh, calling the core party members nazis in her face where members of the the media were basically getting threatened by the rank and file where basically a decision to have the convention in a uh, heavily bilingual area of Campbellton might be the best choice because it was bizarre to a to a fault so again part two we're going to talk about the Campbellton election uh, the rise of CORE uh, uh, and the death of CORE and also the rise of the People's Alliance under the, the fragments of the CORE party. Have a good day. Bye.